Yes. Um, it's, it's often said by Rupert Spurra, or not, actually, it's not often said, but he has said, um, this is a more kind of nuanced observation or statement of his, and I've heard other non-dual teachers say it too, um, including a um, uh, kind of traditional Swami, who I guess, I mean, I guess that's not Ad Advaita Vedanta non-duality, it's a more kind of, I don't know, maybe traditional non-duality teaching but um i've heard them say a lot that um we, we don't experience consciousness directly so i'm wondering what or how how what your understanding is of what we do experience directly if we're not we're not experiencing independently existing objects and phenomena people etc cetera, etc cetera. and at the same time we're not experiencing consciousness directly then what is our direct experience of what is our direct experience in these bodies mm -hmm. from your perspective yeah. if that makes sense to you or I, I mean I'm not even sure if you've it's not talked about that often but it is it is referred to by Rupert Spur and other non-dual teachers on occasion in more kind of nuanced dialogue mm -hmm. yes yes So it depends how we define the term experience. Like in this moment, well, what is what is experience? How do we define experience? Well, before even the concept experience, meaning in silence, in silent presence. There are no words, there is no language. But given that there are no words and no language, <clears throat> one could not say that that means there is nothing. So, we can define experience in referring to phenomena. Uh, experience like I perceive, I sense, I think, I taste, I smell. So we can say the experience is via the senses and via the mind. The five senses and the the realm of thoughts and imagination. I'm experiencing the pink flying elephant, imagining it, and I'm seeing it flying. So we can ex we can define experience phenomenally. Now, what is it that perceives? A thought. The thought appears, and there is no thought which appears without the perceiving aspect, the knowing aspect. There is there's no thought outside of that which knows it. Right? So there is a knowingness or a perceiving. Now there is a common belief that perceiving only arises when there is an object. In other words, that there is no such thing as perceiving without an object. And based upon this belief, then we come to the conclusion that there is only phenomenal perceiving. There is only phenomenal knowing. Because in the absence of phenomena based on, upon that belief there is no knowing but when we investigate the belief that 
knowingness arises only with a thought or with a perception, we can arrive to the conclusion that there is, we're not certain of that. That in fact, there are holes, too many holes that are poked in that belief. Once we come to the understanding that this belief does not stand on its own solid ground, we may be open to the possibility that knowingness is independent of phenomena, is independent of perceiving a thought, and the words perceiving or the knowing aspect does not depend on the presence of a, a form, of an object, of a thought, or of a perception, or of a sensation. Once we come to that understanding, then we have arrived to the understanding that there is another experience besides the phenomenal experience of perception, sensations, and mentation. That there is, in fact, another experience, which is the experience of pure knowing, pure awareness, or pure consciousness. Now, question is then, is the pure knowing or pure consciousness or pure awareness, is it an experience or, or not? In other words, do we know that awareness or consciousness or knowingness stand on its own two feet, independent of phenomena, do we know that conceptually? Or is that understanding a true understanding, an, ex an, a, 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 an, experien an, an experiential understanding, in other words, an understanding that is not just conceptual? In other words, do we know the taste of the mango because it's been described to us? Or have we actually tasted the mango and therefore we can speak about the taste of the mango from our experience of the taste of mango and not simply from a description. So consciousness, knowing itself independent of form is an experience, but it is not a phenomenal experience. Knowing that there is an oak tree in the yard, in other words, consciousness taking on the form of a perception, is as well an experience in the presence of a phenomenon, meaning as consciousness takes on the form of a perception. It is also an experience. So, consciousness is an experience both in its purity, one could say, as it is resting, or one could say in its stillness, and consciousness is an experience, as it takes on 
in the form of a perception, a sensation, or a thought. In other words, across the board, consciousness is an experience in the presence or absence of form. I would finally make the following comment that In our common conditioned understanding, or one could say in ignorance, we believe that there is a personal experiencer of any experience. But in wisdom, there is only consciousness experiencing itself as itself, whether it is not taking on the form of any perception or whether it is. So, maybe going in a slightly different direction, you know you are conscious right now, you know you're aware. You don't know that because of some hearsay or because your priest, rabbi, or mufti has told you that. You know you're aware experientially, directly, it is your direct experience of awareness, being aware that it is aware. I, awareness, I'm aware, and I'm aware that I'm aware. I know I am, and I am. I am, and I know that I am. Thank you, Magdi. 